The imaging archives here at the Art Institute contain more or less the entire history of the museum in photographic form. That's everything from artworks to exhibitions, permanent collection, gallery rotations, staff portraits, events, the campus, VIP visits. So it's a real mix of all kinds of subject matter and also the media itself is really diverse. Everything from glass plate to 8x10 negatives, cellulose diacetate, 4x5s, ectochrome, 35mm, slides, negatives, a little bit of everything. Cellulose acetate negatives comprise a pretty substantial portion of our 8x10 black and white negative collection within the imaging archives. And unfortunately, a pretty substantial portion of these are also degrading. This is due in part because of the inherent vice of the material, so the plastic base is fairly unstable. In addition to poor environmental conditions over the years, has contributed to them degrading more and more. We estimate that there are approximately 30,000 of these negatives and roughly 10% of them are visibly degrading. So this means that they are often channeled and buckled, the film base is actually shrinking which causes wrinkles, and in some cases the emulsion is actually starting to detach from the film base itself. Because we are the visual photographic history of the museum, when you lose these negatives you lose that history, you lose a record of what actually happened in the museum, so capturing them and preserving those images was really important. So the reason why we went with the digital transition setup was the degree of flexibility it afforded us with this particular collection of degrading materials. There's an emphasis on care and handling when it comes to these very delicate materials and the digital transition setup really respected those needs. So we were not forced to sandwich materials that otherwise could have potentially crumbled completely using all of the information. We could delicately place them and there was minimal contact between the copy stand, the film kit system, and the camera obviously did not come into contact with it. Unlike using a flatbed scanner, this really provided us with a large degree of care and consideration for the original objects themselves. We really did not have a digitization project in place. We didn't really have dedicated staff on the project in place beforehand, so the timing was really nice. We were able to use the DT setup to start this kind of digitization process in a really concentrated A to Z way. With the phase one DT setup, it was just so efficient and everything was so clearly custom tailored for exactly what we were doing that it was incredibly quick and responsive. So the integration between both the hardware and the software for the digital transition setup worked really well for us. Previously we had been working with a rapid capture system that we kind of cobbled together and so knowing that the system was really engineered to work harmoniously meant that we had incredible rates of efficiency. We were able to capture at a rate that almost quadrupled our previous rate. And at the same time, we knew that we were handling with care materials that were very fragile. So it's kind of a best of both worlds when it came to both efficiency, quality, and speed, which I didn't think we could get in a system. To me, I guess what was also really impressive about the setup was that the hardware kind of mirrored the software in that way and that it was incredibly powerful, well-designed, but also really user-friendly. So the copy stand setup itself, being able to raise and lower the camera and drive it up and down was really impressive and helpful just how precise and exacting it is. You can very quickly, very easily convert the setup from reflective light, if you're shooting a book or documents, to something transmitted for like a negative or um, transparency. Photographing the negatives, which may seem like an odd choice because traditionally we'd scan these, was actually really beneficial. When they degrade so much, the cellulose diacetate ones, they get really textural and essentially can't be squished onto a flatbed like you would normally. So there's some thickness to them and the DT setup has this glass plate holder and so when you photograph them, they actually become much more legible. So the photograph actually retains more information in some ways than the negative scan would. So even though it still shows the cracking and degradation, the image is still legible and you're able to retain a lot more information and to use it um, in many cases. 
So the photography also, stating the obvious, is just so much faster than scanning. So it became a no-brainer very quickly after a few quick tests that the results were great, the workflow made so much sense, and for these things that are rapidly degrading and fading and dying, this kind of preserves them in a really, really great way. These negatives are primary source materials for a wide variety of users. Unfortunately, they're currently a largely hidden collection, so there isn't a wide degree of access, but the hope is with these digital files, we will actually be able to distribute them much more widely. So in the past, we've had pretty much the full scope of the museum internally use the files, so um, curators, collection managers, researchers generally, but our hope is to distribute them much more widely, publish them on our website so that they're accessible to everyone. Looking at our digitization efforts historically, we have had some projects in the past which have focused on larger chunks of digitization. Unfortunately, a lot of these are not high enough resolution or quality for them to be usable today. And more recently, we've really focused on digitization on demand. So we're pulling negatives as they're requested by both internal users and external licensing requests. But having this type of large-scale um, digitization projects really allows us to get out in front of all of these requests and to provide more access holistically. So for example, from this project, we've actually been working fairly closely with one of our curatorial departments. And as they've been requesting negatives of, say, ancient Egyptian artifacts, we've actually already digitized them as a result of this project. So we've been able to provide access really quickly when they request things.